We're on episode 11 of Big Brother 26. My camera's already about to die, so I'm gonna have to make this video a little bit quick. This episode starts off with the aftermath of the infamous veto ceremony. And going into this episode, I thought that that move will go down as hi in history as either the dumbest Big Brother move, second dumbest versus Varcellus, I guess, because Big Brother told us that that was the sixth time, only six times in history, has the veto winner took someone else off the block and not himself. So if Tucker was to go home, aka lose the AI arena, that will go down as the dumbest move in Big Brother history. If he doesn't go home, that will just be considered one of the most shocking veto moves in veto history. After the veto ceremony, Cedric says he tried to warn Tucker. We see a flashback where Cedric did try to warn Tucker. They said it was only like 90 minutes before the ceremony too, where he was like, look, I talked to a few people, we ain't got the votes, yada, yada, blah, 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 blah. But really Cedric just didn't want to do it. And Tucker said, fuck that, I'm still doing it. <laughs> and he was like, oh, like, and that was that. So, but Tucker was genuinely surprised at the meeting, I will say. He was shocked and he did feel blindsided. I felt that from watching this. So Cedric and Tucker had a little mini fight inside the room, but it wasn't as big as their, it wasn't as intense as their fight coming up, unless that was the same fight and they just broke it up into two scenes. I couldn't really tell, I'm not really sure. We also see a flashback that Cedric did tell the Pentagon about this whole plan that Tucker wanted to do. We uh, That's kind of like what I was alluding to in my last video, where it's like, Cedric, like, we missed out a lot of stuff, and they, they showed us it all in this episode with flashbacks. So Mackenzie kind of calls out Cedric inside of a room, like a bedroom with like a few people. I don't really remember all the names in there. It was like maybe six, seven of them. She's like, so what was the plan? And he's like all tongue, tw tongue twisted and doesn't really know what to say. He's like, the plan was... Then Angela walks in the room and she's like, um, I'm sorry, so this wasn't the plan? <laughs> that was funny. That would probably be a meme for or a gif for a while in Big Brother World. Uh, and then Cedric's like, you want to go to the living room? And like Cedric pretty much calls the house meeting and... He wants Tucker to say what the plan was. So Tucker says, yes, Quinn has this power. Because they were still asking Tuck Quinn about the power. He was still denying it up to this point. He did come out with it inside the house meeting because then he realized everyone knows. So Quinn admits to having the power. He says he wasn't going to use it. Angela makes a face. He kind of like says something to her. Just says he was never going to use it. He didn't want to be targeted. All this stuff, yada, yada, yada. In my opinion, if I was in the house, I would vote Quinn out. Because he has this power where he can just take over the HOH. So pretty much the next HOH don't matter. Because Quinn's is going to use his power. And he's going to be in charge. So I guess the HOH matters in the sense of this person will be safe. The HOH can't be nominated. But who the HOH puts on the block, it don't matter. Because Quinn's taking over. The house meeting was intense. We didn't see a lot of it, unfortunately. I wish we saw more of it. But it was pretty much Tucker versus Quinn. Right? Or Tucker versus Quinn. Tucker versus Cedric. Uh, and it's weird because Tucker keeps saying let's get the best competitor out but then Tucker keeps winning competitions I think this episode he won his third and he keeps talking about let's get the competitors out Tucker you're not the, your, your logic is just not making sense and I like Tucker so then we see this scene where Brooklyn's like yeah uh, I might be crazy but I still trust Quinn <laughs> and I understand Brooklyn because she was in an alliance with Quinn and he's not coming after her so that's all that it is is he's not coming after her he's got a lot of people in front of her so of course she should stay aligned with Quinn uh, if I was her yeah sure why not Brooklyn ha is continuing to impress me and I she's still probably my favorite player of the season which by the way I think I'm gonna do a players ranking video to real soon to say who is my favorite to least favorite or least favorite to favorite so that I can see in the finale how my list changed. Let me know if y'all are interested in that. So then we see Quinn go on an apology tour, mainly with the Pentagon. Uh, he apologizes to them, says why he didn't tell about his power. And yeah, like they all seem pretty forgiving, especially Brooklyn and Cedric too. Cedric, Cedric went fishing for him to tell about it and he didn't. And Cedric was just immediately accepting his apology and was like, we're cool. So like, I got this, and my camera died. Uh, I wonder if I didn't tell y'all that, would y'all even had no? But yeah, my camera died for, so I charged it for like 20, 25, 30 minutes, and now I'm back. And I think I left off on Quinn's apology tour. He, I, I think I got through that. He apologized to all the Pentagon, and he was going around like saying why he didn't say, why he didn't tell people, but it's, it's so dumb because like, he didn't have to tell anybody. It's crazy that he has to apologize for that. Um, on the feeds, he was saying, oh, I should have just told everyone. I should have just told... No, you should have told no one. And 
that's another thing. Inside the meeting, the house meeting, Tucker called out Chemo as someone who knew. So Chemo and Angela knew, but nothing really came of Chemo knowing. But Chemo was kind of freaking out, like, oh my God, you just dropped my name. You just... <laughs> also, Rubina and, while I'm thinking of this, Rubina and Tucker are on a full-blown showmance at this point, and people are starting to realize it. That's going on on the feeds right now. It was not shown in this episode, but yeah, those two are... They're kissing now. Not on the lips, but they're kissing like forehead, cheek, neck. They're getting really, really close. So, and it seems natural. So, I like them. Next, we see everyone speculating and kind of campaigning to America not to be the America's vote and also speculating who would be America's vote. Uh, Chelsea says that she thinks it could be Quinn. Joseph says that he thinks it could be him. Cam said it could be Quinn. It was just speculation everywhere. And then some people were campaigning, like Brooklyn was campaigning. To, Please don't let it be me and stuff like that. Next we see the group inside the bedroom. This is the infamous fight that was going around on Twitter. And like I said, I don't know if this is the same fight from earlier or a different one. Inside this room, there's Chelsea, Cam, Cedric, t -Cor, Tucker, Cam, Cedric, t -Cor, Tucker, Cam, Cedric, t -Cor, Chelsea. That's who's inside the room. And a big fight breaks out. And they were yelling. Like, Tucker was yelling at Cedric. And, I, like, Cam is the one that kind of called this. He wants to hash it out. He wants everybody to be cool. But, yeah, Tucker was pissed off. And he was yelling at Cedric. And I felt bad, super bad for Cedric. Because, like, I've always been saying, like, these episodes, like, Cedric is just such a nice person. He just seems like such a good, nice guy. He's not confrontational at all. And Tucker was just yelling at him, calling him a motherfucker, saying it was a bitch move, saying he's coming after him, saying all this. He says he has the numbers. And it was funny because Chelsea was in her DR like, what numbers do you have? <laughs> like, I want to get you out now. Like, all this. t Core was the realest in this whole room because she got up and left out. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. Like, she just got up and left. And then she went to the kitchen. She was like, I want to go to bed. And they're yelling. I love t Core. She is... Really climbing my ranks of being one of my favorite house guests. She is hilarious. I really like T-Core. It kind of just ended with Tucker telling Cedric, don't talk to me for the rest of the week and saying he's going to win the AI arena. And the way he was talking, I'm just like, Tucker, I really hope you win the AI arena because you, you're really betting on it. Like, bro, you're... The move you made and now you keep saying you're going to win it, you better freaking win it. That's all I can say. We get to America's vote and Julia reveals that it's Quinn. I think Quinn pretty much was thinking that it could be him and but I feel like he was hurt like he seemed like oh I'm not scared I'm not scared and like trying to like show that he wasn't like surprised or something but I feel like it, it's gotta hurt for America to vote you in out of like what is it 13 people and after what just happened your game got blown up and everything like yeah I feel bad for Quinn because I do like Quinn I like Quinn I really wish Quinn and Tucker actually didn't fall out but I mean I don't know. I like what Tucker did because the game was getting bored. Like, this week would have been so, like, we would have had nothing all those days. So, but I, I did feel bad for Quinn a little bit because he's a good person. He's a good guy. And the Americans voted him in, but they just did it for entertainment. You know, I don't think anyone really wanted him to leave the house. AI Arena. I really like this. I really like this. This is probably my favorite one so far. It might have been... No, I like the spelling challenge a lot. I was about to say, it might have been my favorite challenge so far. But I did like the spelling one. And I like the elimination one too, uh, whatever that that H O H the Angela one. I like that one too. There's been some pretty good challenges, but this one was like a data drives challenge or something like that. I forgot what it was called. Of course, I'll never remember the name of these challenges. But they were inside this box with balls flying all around, different colors, and they had to get 20 red balls inside of this like tube. And it, it was kind of hard because a different color ball could go into the tube and then just lose a point. But the first to 20 wins, and I think it was timed. And uh, I was uh, super tense watching this because I was really hoping that Tucker won. And I'm pretty sure, like, this was a very tense moment. Like, even though we had fights during this episode, I feel like the AI arena is where everybody was on the edge of their seats. And Tucker came up with a strategy. I'm pretty sure we all saw it because those balls were flying all around. He got low and kind of just collected them all on the side of a corner and got the red ball. Like, because I think... At one point, he had, like, five, and the other two had zero yet. But then, like, he had, like, 13. <laughs> you only had to hit 20. He had, like, 13, and I think Quinn had five, and Kenny had, like, three. 
So, but he got low, got in the corner, collected all the red balls, and put them inside, and he won. And he went crazy when he won. Like, let's go. I ain't going nowhere. And I'm sure we all were happy because, like, he's entertainment. I don't want him to leave anytime soon. I definitely want him to make it to Jerry at least. So I think he just has to, oh, man, he has to make it through two more evictions. And next eviction is, oh, we'll get to it. So in this moment, I thought, though, like, is this going to be the first time where the rest of the house guests don't cheer when Julie announces who won? Because they probably wanted Quinn to win. But they did cheer when Julie announced that Tucker won. He gave everybody a hug, fives, whatever. There was no time to campaign this time. Kenny just started hugging people. It looked like he was just saying goodbye or vote me out. It's okay. And then we saw Quinn who was saying, like, is, can we campaign now? Is it time to make our pitches? But she didn't even give them time. She just said, sit down. They sat down. Uh, the speeches. I liked Quinn's speech. He said, keep me in the house because I'm going after Tucker. That's my target. I like that. It, that is a speech that you want to have. It's, look, I'm not coming after y'all. I'm coming after him. Simple. Uh, I just really don't want Tucker to leave next episode, but it's not looking good. Kenny's speech was nothing special. He said that he was a fighter, which I didn't see it. Uh, and then he said he missed his family. They did the votes, and Kenny was evicted. Like, I think it was 10 to 1 or something like that. Only one person voted to keep Kenny, and that was Tucker. Tucker voted Quinn out because he said that he's the best competitor. Tucker, you're an idiot. I'm sorry, but you're the best competitor. You're out your mind if you think Quinn's the best competitor. Quinn's won one thing in this house, and most people didn't even know he won it. Right? Or am I wrong? I could be wrong. Maybe Quinn won something else. Also, something weird was, like, Julie made, pretty much made Cedric tell her that she was beautiful. That was a very awkward moment. It was funny. <laughs> but we get to the interview with Kenny, and it was really nothing. Like, Julie just talked about how like, you wanted to be on the show for so long, and then you wanted to leave. And he was like, yeah, I underestimated, it. you know, blah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone. They tell us that next week on, I think, Tuesdays, there's going to be, like, Taylor and Jag and Cody coming to talk about the house and what crazy three weeks has been. I'm like, it's been three weeks. Like, <laughs> y'all could do this at six weeks or something? That's crazy. Well, whatever, I guess. It would be nice to see Taylor. Cody's cool on YouTube, but I wasn't really a big fan of him inside the Big Brother house at all. Uh, season 22 was a horrible season. Or All-Stars, whatever season All-Stars was. That was not a good season at all. And then Jag is cool, but just, like, I, don't, I remember not liking him that much last season. So, yeah. But I feel like this was a good episode. I feel like next episode, like, next week is kind of, like, just weird. Because it's automatically Quinn. Like, we all know Quinn's going to use his power. So, Quinn's HOH. HOH don't matter. HOH is pretty much for safety. Like, there should be no talks or nothing because Quinn's taking it over. I almost kind of want Quinn to win HOH. Because if Quinn wins HOH, then it's like, whatever. But then, like, I'm like, maybe I should want Tucker to win HOH cause, so that way Tucker's safe. I don't know. I don't know. And then Tucker, if Tucker wins HOH, that means he's safe and he gets to compete for Vito. So maybe, yeah, maybe I want Tucker to win HOH. But then, like, do I really want... Tucker's going to take over with the most wins on Big Brother and Big Brother history if he just... Because he's won three competitions already, and we're on week three. Right? This is week three, I think. I think it's week three. There's been three evictions. Matt, Lisa, and now Kenny. I'm glad Kenny's gone, too. That's a boring uh, house guess. But, yeah, if Tucker wins HOH and Vito, that puts him at, like, five... And we're not even at jury. So, yeah. He is. I hope that's what happens, though. I hope he wins HOH so he can't leave. Because if he don't, if he doesn't win any challenge next week, there's three challenges next week. He needs to, and he's, we don't know if he's competing inside of uh, Vito. So, yeah. He needs to win one of those three competitions or it's not looking good for Tom. It's just not looking good. Uh, but that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to leave it a like, comment, subscribe, share it on all forms of social media, and I will catch y'all later.